Welcome everyone. This is Mohan Raghavan. Today, as part of video, we are going to discuss builder pattern in Python. There are a lot of explanation about the builder pattern in Google for the Python. But today we are going to see very basic about the builder pattern and what are the things we need to consider when you build for the builder pattern. Before proceeding, we will just see how the pictorial representation about the builder pattern in general. So it will have very simple construction. For example, you will be building the object in any case, right? So when you build the object rather than building in a single go, you will be building a step by step process to get the object at final. So this is a very basic concept about the builder pattern. Nevertheless, we are going to discuss the main entities in this are builder and as well as the entity. So that means that entity is nothing but what is the object that you are going to prepare that will be having some pattern. So that will be having the entity class. And after that builder, builder is the class which will be building the object and giving to you. So these are the very basic two entities for the builder pattern, which is nothing but builder and entity. If we go to the advanced level of builder pattern, it will be having the, let's say interfaces, abstract classes, concrete builder or director and so on. But very basic entity about the builder pattern is builder and the actual class for which we are going to create the object. Then after the main point is building the complex object step by step rather than any one go. So building the complex object in the sense, let's say you have the object which has, let's say hundreds of parameters. And every time you may not be requiring all the parameters to be set. And even you cannot just mention that inside the init method, because if you have more than some 14 or 13, it will not be looking good and it will not have any readability of the code. Even if you are going to use something like sonar cube and so on, so that will suggest that you should not have more parameters, even though it is optional also. So when you look for the readability also, it will give the advantage. And another point is any user will not be interested to provide all the values at all the time. So you may be providing some values for some required object and other time you may be giving some other values. So in simple words, at any time object can be returned by calling the build method. So that we will be seeing how it works. And even you can pass the existing object for the particular class and you can modify the, or you can set the values for the specific object. So now we will understand. So as we discussed earlier, so here we will see the picture again. So it will be having the builder class and it will be having the object here. So this object has to match some pattern, right? So pattern is in some blueprint that will be again another class, which is entity class. For our example, we are going to discuss the person. So person is here entity class. So for simplicity, I'm just having only three parameters, but in real world, you will be having a multiple parameters. That's why it will become a complex object. Just for understanding purpose, we are going to have only three parameters and we will consider this object is a complex object. Then iPhone iPhone, sorry, underscore underscore str method is the method when you just want to see the string representation of the object, you can see that. So here I'm having all the three parameters inside the string representation, which is nothing but name and age and place. Now this is the object we are going to prepare. And what about the person builder? So this is the builder class. In builder class, we have the init method and we will be calling with that, with the object of the same person builder and we will be passing the person object. Here you can notice this is the person. If you pass the value, it will be getting the existing person object. If you don't pass it, it will be taking the new person object, which will be creating from the above class. So at any time you will be passing one person object. It can be your own person object or it can be the new person object created by the person builder itself. And then after you are setting the name. So once you have the person builder object, you are going to set the name for the particular person. And you know that in the init method, you are attaching one more parameter or the attribute to the person builder. Just to note, it is the attribute to the person builder object. That's why you are making self dot person here self in the sense it is the object of person builder. So person builder object has one more type or attribute person and it will be mapping with your whatever the object you are sending for person. Now you can see set name. It will be setting the name for the person what you have sent for the value. For example, in this case, this is the name and it will be setting the name and return self. So here self in the sense it is returning the object of the person builder. 
so why do we need to return the person builder object rather than the person object why because we are not going to call the closing method we are going to call another method from any method from this person builder so that we can set the values for some other parameters for example i want to call the age method so if i want to call the set age method i need to have the object of the person builder because it is the instant method of the person builder so in that case you need to return the self because you can chain it let's say i am having the person builder object and i am passing some existing person i have set the name now if i return the object of the same person builder with that object i can call any method from the same person builder so that i can call set age set place and so on let's say you are considering that you have completed all the setup activity for the given person object now this is the time you will be calling the build method this build method will finally wrap your person object and it will return the person object so that means that you have completed your all setup activities now you are returning the person object so that means that you will be having the person object at last of the build method now we will be seeing the uh, very simple example now i am creating the object for the person builder as we discussed earlier we will be calling the build method directly because we can call any time the build method to get the object of the given person so i am calling this person object sorry i am calling the build method and i am getting the person object because you can clearly see it is returning the self dot person so that means that i am printing the person you can see all the empty values because i have not called any setup activity then after let's say i am having the same person object but here i am dereferencing and referencing again back to the new builder object so here i have the object of the person builder and i am calling the set age set name so set age after calling the set age it will be returning the object of the person builder so since it's a person builder object i can call some other method from the same person builder so i am calling the set name after completing everything i am calling the build method so build method obviously it returns the person object so i am assigning to the person variable again this is the way you will be just setting all the values and at last you will be calling the build so in that case you can change the sequence of the setting the values you can ignore some values you can add some values even you can pass the existing object now you can see here i have set only the age and the name now i want to change something for the same person so that time i can pass the person to the person builder in that case the init method will be taking the the value what we are going to give so that's the reason here the person will be given to here so here instead of creating the new object our person will be set to the attached to the object of the person builder then after you are calling the set place so it will be making the changes over the same person so that means that it is updating the place for the same person then you are building the object so that means that build will return the person object so again i am assigning to the same variable person now i am trying to print the person the printing will be taken care by the str method so it will be printing all the name if the name is there then it will print it otherwise it will print any it is same for the age and places hope it under it it's clears so we will run it and see how the output comes so first you can see the first time you build directly so the default value has been given that's the reason you are giving the name age everything as a not applicable and after that next time i am just giving the only the name and the age now you can see pythonist and age and place is still empty so that's the reason none actually so that's the reason you are seeing the na and next time i am passing the existing object person to the person builder class with that builder object i am just setting the place so that i am building the object also it returns the person object i am printing the same person now you can see the existing object has been updated with the place also so this is a very basic flow about the builder pattern so that you can have the entity class you can have the builder class it is just like outsourcing your object building activity to the second class that class can have the different methods to set the different values but any time you can call that your required object by using the build method so this is all about the builder pattern in python in very basic level so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day